Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about an all new feature introduced by the Specflow team on Specflow's living documentation generator. So the Specflow living documentation is not a new concept by Specflow because Specflow already has this living documentation available in the Azure DevOps uh, integration. So if you have Specflow Plus plugin already available or purchased, then you can use the Specflow Plus along with Azure DevOps and then you can use it. But those things are already there in Azure DevOps side. But there is no offline generator available in Specflow where you can generate uh, the Specflow feature file as a living documentation like pickled report that I have discussed a long time before, I guess like five years before. It's exactly the same idea which Specflow also have to generate the report for offline. So it's more like a uh, living documentation, but to me it's more like a report because it also integrate the pass fail reports of the test execution happens for that particular uh, Specflow scenario. So this is now available with the uh, Specflow's new offline generator, as you can see over here. This is just introduced on 25th August, which is like uh, yesterday. And it is pretty new, brand new, and it is available. So we can try it out and see how it actually works. And the one which I was talking about, the living documentation available in Azure is this one, as you can see over here. It is something that you can plug in with the Azure DevOps you need to actually acquire the licensing of Specflow Plus, even though Specflow Plus is right now like free after acquired by the Tricentis company. Everything is going free with Specflow, like Specflow Plus is free, the living documentation is free, even the living documentation generator is now free. So all of them are available actually as a free version right now. And you can see at the moment, they actually have all these uh, generation of the Azure DevOps side of things as an offline generation using this particular Specflow Plus living doc generator plugin. It is very, very simple to work with. All you have to do is you just need to install this Specflow Plus uh, living doc plugin, and then you need to use this Specflow living doc uh, CLI command to just execute and see how it is gonna uh, generate all those uh, things for you. It's very, very straightforward and simple, and we will see in a demo quickly like how it has to be used along with the existing Specflow code. We'll also see how we can actually uh, mix and match both the extent reporting and the Specflow documentation, and we'll see how it, they are both different and how they actually varies in terms of uh, the features, because we know that extent reporting is very, very uh, powerful. It actually has exactly the same BDD concept as well, but it not only generates the report, it also generates a cool dashboard for us, like how many tests it has executed, what is the pass and fail rates, and how many uh, time it took for executing everything, because that's actually a report, right? But this living documentation of Specflow is not like a report, it is more like one uh, report which is gonna be used, or maybe a documentation which is gonna be used by the business analyst or any member within the company who is gonna read through the scenario that we have written, and then it's gonna be used for publishing uh, as a centralized repository and we can see like how that particular test is going to be performed based on that particular scenario. So it's more like a, a readable documentation. But extent reporting is more than that. We cannot really compare with extent reporting along with the uh, living documentation of Specflow. But here the code maintenance and, and you don't really have to write any code basically for this particular uh, Specflow uh, living documentation. Everything is going to come up for you automatically pretty much like the pickle uh, reporting concept, which was there long time before and is still there. But yeah, this reporting is really, really cool. And you can see why it is really cool based on the new feature it has introduced, especially the tables, which is available in Specflow is really, really cool. You can actually see what I really mean. So for that, I'm gonna quickly show you a demo in my Visual Studio 2019, and we'll see how it actually works. So as you can see over here in the screen, uh, this is the installation process. It's very, very straightforward and simple. All you have to have is a Visual Studio's uh, project, and then you need to install the Specflow plus living documentation plugin. And once it is installed, you can start running your code pretty straightforward. And once the test is being executed, it's going to generate a uh, feature uh, .json file, uh, just nothing but the feature data.json file. And using that feature data.json file, you can actually uh, generate the living documentation using this 
specflow.pus.livingdoc.cli command line tool. So that's it. This is very, very straightforward. I think this is super easy to actually work with. I'll actually show you how it actually works. So I already have a Visual Studio project uh, created over here. I'm just gonna copy paste some of the code uh, to save some of the time. But uh, to just start with, you can see I have installed the latest version of Visual Studio 2019 in my machine. And I have Visual Studio's uh, plugin for specflow as well over here so I can show you the real new feature which was introduced by the specflow as well so if you click create this new project there is a specflow project template as well so this is pretty brand new uh, which is where I kind of sleek I guess because once you select this specflow project template and then if you just give the name probably uh, like that and once you hit create it's also going to ask you what version of framework that you're going to be using whether you're going to use the dotnet core 3.1 or you're going to use the uh, dotnet framework 4.8 for that matter you can use that and it will also ask you which uh, specflow runner that you're going to be using whether you're going to use the specflow plus runner or you're going to use the end unit i'm going to choose end unit because i don't really uh, need the uh, the idea of the specflow plus within my machine so i'm just going to use this uh, specflows uh, that are end unit for that matter i'm just going to use that because uh, specflow even though it is free right now i don't see any much benefit out of specflow plus versus the uh, existing specflow which is available so i'm just going to go with what we have uh, all right, so now you can see that the specflow would have been already installed within this particular package over here. It also has the end unit, uh, specflow uh, end unit, and it also will have the specflow MS build generation and everything. So everything that you really require for creating a specflow scenario is already available along with all the dependencies, which is pretty cool. So once everything is there in place, I'm gonna start creating a new feature file. And once again, within this particular template, you can see that it has automatically created a feature file, like a folder structure, uh, steps folder, and also the step definitions file. So these are the good practices. I guess we have already discussed about it a lot. Like these are the best practices that we need to follow while working with the BDD spec flow scenarios. And the team has come up with a very good scaffolding of the coding for us, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna do one small thing over here. Other than the existing packages, we also need to install the new Specflow's living documentation uh, plugin. So I guess once you hit this Specflow Plus, uh, you'll get the Specflow uh, Plus living doc plugin. So I'm just gonna install that. And it tells me that there is a version conflict over here. Uh, I guess the version of uh, spec flow which we have uh, over here is pretty old let's see what version we have 3.3.57 let's go and update the spec flow oh yeah see that it's pretty old version anyways so i'm just gonna update that to the latest version so it seems like even uh, the uh, template of spec flow has to be updated with the latest version of spec flow that's the reason we're getting this error so I guess we're pretty new right now in terms of the versions. So if I go specflow plus uh, living doc plugin and hit install, hopefully it installed this time. There you go, it installed. Very easy, very, very straightforward. So without having this plugin, we will not have this new feature data.json file. It won't be generated, but this time it's gonna be generated for me. So I have already written the uh, feature file just for saving some time and I'm gonna show you how it's actually gonna work as well. So uh, the implementation of this particular uh, step definition file is, I think I have written that as well. I'm just gonna copy paste that over here. There you go. I guess everything is bounded, the feature files. Uh, and then I'm gonna do one more small change over here. I'm just gonna create a, a hooks file which is going to hold the uh, extent report uh, codes as well. So I also need to create an or maybe add a package for the extent report, which is also right now .NET Core compatible. We already know about that. We have already discussed about it a lot. I'm just going to install that as well. I'll just show you a side by side comparison of how these two reports going to look like as well. I mean, it's extent report is a report, whereas this is a living documentation. But still, the whole idea of extent report is to use it both like an, a report as well as like a living documentation. That's exactly what the specflows plugin is also doing right now. All right, it's installed. I'm going to go to the test hook. Once again, I'm just going to copy paste all the codes, uh, which is going to be uh, living over here. I'm just going to paste that. Pretty cool. Uh, let's add the 
uh, dependencies. Pretty quickly. Brilliant. I think everything is good right now. So if I build the solution. Oops. Uh, all right. Let's add that. And you can see that the currently the report I'm generating is sitting on the extend reports uh, folder, uh, which is going to be uh, this folder. As you can see, I'm just going to delete uh, these files from here and we'll see how the report is going to be generated. So this is going to be a very, very straightforward uh, scenario. Basically, we have not did any implementation. This is just like a skeleton uh, scenarios. The whole idea is to see how the report is going to be looking like. And now if I try to execute this, you can see that this is basically going to generate a report for us, uh, which is something about the extent reporting. At the same time, it's going to generate an uh, feature a data.json file. So now you can see that one test is failed, which is intentional. I just made it fail over here, as you can see, asset.fail. But uh, the another one, which just got passed, I just want to show you how the report is going to look like, the living documentation is going to look like, as well as the extent reporting. So if I go to the project's uh, bin directory, and if I go to the bin debug net core, you can see that we have this feature data.json file. So this JSON file is generated just now uh, after we installed this particular living documentation plugin. And using this particular JSON file, we can actually generate the living documentation of Specflow itself. So if you go to this particular uh, link, you can see on the documentation they have mentioned that you need to use this particular command, basically. So .NET tool install this specflow living doc CLI, and once it is installed, you can then run the uh, feature data.json file from the path it is mentioned. So I'm just gonna copy this particular path, and if I go to the uh, PowerShell, I have already installed this particular tool, so I can just do this uh, living, I guess it's living document, living doc, and living doc of this particular uh, feature data.json file. If I just execute, it is going to generate the living doc as well on the extent report folder. So if I go to this folder, you can see that we now have this living .html file. It is generated just now using this command line. And we also have an index.html file, which is nothing but the extent reporting basically. So we'll see first the uh, living .html file. Uh, you can see that this is the file which has been generated by the specflow's new living doc plugin so this is pretty pretty cool as you can see over here it actually has a very detailed uh, table structure and also shows the scenarios and also shows all the table structure details for you this is one of the most interesting thing which i really like to see on this particular uh, specflow's living documentation plugin but if you see the extent reporting the table structure will not come actually so if you see over here, it actually doesn't really show you the table. It also don't show you the uh, background separately. So if you have a background, you can see that the background is actually mixed along with that particular scenario like that. So basically these three lines are from the backgrounds of the uh, scenario. And these three lines are basically the scenario itself, but all of them are merged into one particular scenario. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if we know that these are the three lines is going to be common for all the scenarios. It is somehow merged into, uh, into this particular uh, uh, extent reporting scenarios. But over here, it tells you clearly that this is the background. Uh, this is the scenario with the tag name. And this is another scenario with the tag name and also shows you the report with the table structure over here. There is no such table, at least for the free version. So if you buy a premium version of the extent reporting, you actually have these uh, table structures as well. And you also have many different things like within this extent reporting, you can go and see the dashboard. It shows you the time it takes to execute this particular scenarios. And also you can save this report on an uh, MongoDB using the Clo reporter, just like a historical reporter, you can do that. So Clo reporter, extent reporting, HTML reporter, email reporters. There are many features in the extent report which is available, but it's it's more like a report, right? But this a living documentation is something, it's more like a plugin for you to see how this report is going to look like and how you can leverage the power of the living documentation to share within the team and how you can make them use it to see what your scenario is going to look like. And most importantly, this living documentation helps you to integrate within the Azure DevOps pipeline. So you can see how the execution of the scenario has happened. And if there is any failure in a particular scenario, you can see why it has got failed over this living documentation itself, which is pretty, pretty cool.
So that's it guys, this is the new feature of Specflow's new living document generator, uh, which is available offline. We can generate it right now. We don't really have to have an Azure licensing and Specflow plus integrated along with it. We can use it with the Specflow itself. Very cool. Please go and uh, give a shot and see how it actually works for you. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day. Meet you in our next video.